everyone. This is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 910. I'm joined by a really special guest. His name is Michael Montgomery. He's a former NFL defensive end. He played for Texas A&M for college. He, he had two stints with the Green Bay Packers, played for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, he also played in a different league, which we'll get to. And he, he went to the Juco route, too. He was Juco All-American, first team All-Big 12. Uh, what a great career, 122 tackles, five sack, over five sacks. And now he has a podcast called Undefeated, and you can follow him on all social media formats. Uh, man, this guy does it all. But Michael, uh, M- Michael Montgomery, I just want to say thank you for joining the show. It's truly an honor. And how are you and your family doing today? Man, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, no problem. So um, I want to start off with your childhood growing up. Obviously, you grew up in Texas. So what was it like as a kid growing up in Texas? And when did you realize that you wanted to uh, get into the game of football? And uh, who was your role model uh, that you looked up to along the way? Uh, uh, you know, growing up, you know, I, I always like to say East Texas because, you know, I moved around a lot because my mother, she was a basketball coach. And, you know, with with the coach coaching jobs, you know, you got to move with the position. So we moved around a lot, but we stayed mostly like in East Texas area. And um, you know, my, my mother, she was one of my, my, my role models. She was, uh, you know, Hall of Fame basketball player, hmm. um, you know, inducted jerseys from Panola Junior College, Stephen F. Austin. She played in the Olympics, Pan American Games. She's, you know, all world mother. And all universe, all, all world player, and all university mother, and uh, she was the person I kind of looked up to, and um, I told God, you know, you know, as I, you know, in a trophy room, I said, look, if I can, you know, take a accomplish a smidgen of what you've done, you know, it, it'll be a truly blessing. So she was my ultimate uh, role model, and both of my parents actually, uh, you know, how they raised me to be, you know, upstate and treat people how I want to be treated. And when I started getting into football was in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing, you know, my junior year in high school. And, you know, the whole, asp- you know, aspirations of playing was just to be stronger in basketball. I thought basketball was my sport. And when I played football, it became – easy for me and natural for me you know I'm a very you know an aggressive guy when I'm on the field I love to hit so it became a lot easier for me and that's what you know things kind of took off when I started getting the offers and and uh, awards wow yeah so speaking of positions and did you get to play any other positions in football before playing defensive end and did you get the did you get the aspects of both sides or only uh, only play defense your high school uh, they had me playing defense you know I uh, played defensive tackle my first year my junior year and then we moved we switched to a different defense from uh, three four to four three and that had me playing defensive end so uh, you know our coach was he was big on just one guy playing one position but uh, I think I could have helped but uh, he was super big on just playing one position well yeah, so speaking of your mother, uh, what's it like to have, uh, obviously she was a former athlete playing basketball, Hall of Fame basketball player, and what was, was it like uh, looking up to your mom and seeing her go about her business, being an athlete and training every day, like seeing her routine? So what was it like having her and then helping you become the athlete that you are today, that you were before? Uh, I saw, I saw the biggest thing that stood out, you know, besides the talent was her character, mm-hmm. you know, how she carried herself on and off the court and how she treat people. You know, she di- didn't see color. She saw character and she treated yeah. people, everybody to accordingly. And uh, that was a big thing that kind of stood out for me. You know, very cry- religious woman, Christ and God and how she carried herself. And that was a big thing that just kind of wanted me to mirror myself as what she's done. And uh, she's been inspirational to me, you know, throughout my career in and out. And uh, that's what kind of just stood out for me as uh, my mother was a Hall of Fame. Funny story, my senior year, my senior year um, in high school, she got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Oh, you know, wow. they flew us out to, to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame hmm. in Tennessee. You know, they picked us up in the limo. You know, it was just such an amazing time. You know, uh, it was just amazing speak to see that. And, and not only that, Things didn't go to her head. She's still the down-to-earth person. 
and um, you know her character that just kind of stood out for me. And I told myself, regardless of what happens or what I accomplish, I just always want to be the same through and through. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so for you, senior year in high school, what what were the main things that you worked on as a player to to, to become a better defensive end and waiting for those scholarship offers to come in? And what what was your main focus a senior year coming into uh, uh, the, the recruiting process? Um, basically just playing hard and, and getting stronger, you know, I, um, you know, lifting weights and, and, and all that, this stuff wasn't really my forte. And, you know, as I started late in football, I started lifting weights <laughs> late hmm. and, you know, I got super long arms and I wasn't that strong. I remember, uh, it was my senior year. I could, I, I, I could barely bench one, 180, I, I barely could bench 185. And I was a senior in high school, and uh, you know the, my whole the whole coaching staff laughed because you know when you see me play on the on the field, you know people was like, "Man, this guy's dominating. Man, this guy is aggressive. He's throwing people around. He's getting all blocks." But when they see me in the weight room, you know it was just a you know it was a laughing stock because I wasn't that strong. So I just kind of just focused on getting stronger. Um, I was a big stats guy. Um, you know, when I started getting serious about football and saw a possible future uh, in a career as a professional, I knew that statistics, you know, I had to get numbers. I had to get this amount of tackles, this amount of sacks, you know, and also just my effort. I knew that, you know, my effort was going to get me seen on tape. My effort was going to get me noticed, you know, more than anything. So just playing hard, being chasing that football from each play and uh, just getting stronger. Hmm. So going to your college recruitment process, how many offers did you get? Obviously, obviously you chose Texas A&M, but how many other offers did you get? And uh, what made you choose Texas A&M? Uh, I was in junior college at the time junior. in the Vero Junior College. And, uh, um, you know, I had bad grades I, when I was coming out of high school. That would let me go to junior college. But, you know, I got humbled and I worked out and I got qualified. And I had five offers. And, you know, I'm from a small town, country guy. I ain't never been nowhere. So when they told me they gonna, they want to take me on a private jet and fly me to the college mm. and for a weekend and feed me food all weekend, I'm like, yes, I want to take all my visits. So I took uh, a visit to LSU, uh, Arkansas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, and uh, gosh, what's the last one? Tennessee. Mm. And, um, and uh, you know, it was all really great schools. Uh, me, I, I was more focused on the opportunity, who they had in my position, what, what position they wanted me to play, and what type of defense it was. I didn't really care about partying and, right. and, and the girls. I was actually more focused because, you know, I only had two years, <laughs> and I really didn't have no time to, to play around and party and focus on parties and, and what's the best school to party and women. I was more focused on who's in the position, what position they want me to play, and what type of defense is it. So that was the number one thing that I was – that was the number one priority for me. So A&M, you know, they had new coaches, a new coaching staff, a new defense. Uh, no, the starters was gone, and uh, A&M was a, – a, and it was closer to home, and – I felt it was a, a great choice for me to go in there and compete for a starting position uh, to to ultimately pursue my goal as an NFL player. Hmm. So uh, well, speaking of um, Texas a and obviously you got to stay close to home and uh, obviously your family and your friends came yeah. to see you play. So what was it like, the atmosphere like in Texas A&M playing uh, for that college and having your family there and your friends seeing you play in, uh, in person playing? Yeah, uh, A&M, man, it's, it's a place like no other, man. I, I was so blessed and so honored to play in that stadium. You know, when they talk about the tradition and the love, you know, you don't really understand it while you're playing football because, you know, it's mostly a given you playing football. Right. But when you come back as a non-player and, you know, it comes with the same type of love and aspirations, it, it, it's a true honor, you know, it's, the the play in that stadium, you know, a hundred thousand fans scream and you know, rowdy. It's it's it's, it's most one of the most exciting uh, experiences in, in my life playing at A&M. 
Yeah, so um, speaking of JUCO, um, how how did it help you? The, how a big big impact for JUCO league? Because I see now a lot of players going to JUCO league first um, before going to college. And how, how what how does JUCO league help players? And how how, how a big impact did it help you to, to become the the player you are? Well, JUCO JUCO it's it's so much talent. Yeah, a, a so much talent. And a lot of guys fall short because, you know, their great, their GPA wasn't high enough. They didn't score high enough on the SAT and ACT test. And it, it was the chalk with talent. I played guys who was committed to Miami, committed to Texas, committed to all the number one schools, Oklahoma, Alabama. And uh, what helped me was, you know, being humble and grounded, knowing that, you know, talent is not enough if you want to make it uh, uh, to a division one school, uh, you all, you have to have your grade. You have to have a high GPA and a and high SAT and ACT scores. So, you know, being in junior college humbled me, you know, cause you know, as I was coming out of high school, I, I was, was a really cocky guy. You know, I was all state, you know, in football and basketball, getting all these MVPs. And, you know, my mom always told me she was a coach and a teacher. Right. And she said, you need to get your grades up or else you're not going to go to, you know, to a big division one school. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, look, mom, if they want me. They're going to make it. They're going to make, they're going to do whatever they need to do to get me there. And, and that wasn't the case. But uh, going to junior college, you know, I had to, you know, gratefully, I picked a really good school. Um, they stressed academics. Uh, they had an academic plan. It was a one sheet of one sheet paper of what classes I needed to take, what grades I needed to make, what GPA I needed to make, and you know everything just fell on me. So if if I failed to get to a Division One school to be Division One qualified, it would have been on it. It would have been my uh, fault. Hmm. So that's why Navarro was a great opportunity for me because they not only stressed, uh, you know being an upstanding player uh, on and off the field, but academics. And uh, that's what junior college kind of propelled my, my um, level of academics. Oh, yeah. So, so playing for Texas A&M, obviously you play against high level competition and playing in the uh, big conference there. And what was it like competing against high level competition, always competing for a national champion or a bowl game? Throughout your college career, man, at A and M, you know, it's funny, sir. I was with, uh, I was hanging out with Vince Young yesterday, oh, wow. and uh, I was, and we was having this big discussion with Big Twelve and SEC, and I said, look, man, I don't want to sound too old, but back in my day, every game I was playing against Heisman Trophy <laughs> potential Heisman Trophy winners. Huh. I remember Week One, we played Alex Smith. <laughs> <laughs> week two, uh, we played Larry Fitzgerald. Hmm. Then we went in the, the Big 12 Conference, Cedric Benson, Vince Young, oh. uh, Darren Sproles. Mm -hmm. uh, so we was playing against high, highly ranked talent, draftable talent every week. Um, um, Adrian Peterson, Oklahoma. So every, every year, we was playing against highly talented teams hmm. with a bunch of high draft picks. And you know, that was another reason that kind of propelled me to go to A&M because I knew, you know, if I could play hard and get noticed in the Big 12, that I would have a better shot of getting to the NFL. Because, you know, A&M, they had a big uh, reputation for putting defensive line in uh, getting drafted from A&M. So I remember, you know, last couple of years, they had Rocky Bernard, and then they had uh, Ty Warren. So they always had reputation for putting out defensive linemen. So that what made me want to go to A&M as well because of the conference play. Hmm. So um, so I want to get to your draft experience here. Obviously, you got drafted in 05, round six, pick 180 by the Green Bay Packers. What a great or organization. Uh, it is, they, they, they're one of the best franchises, in my opinion, in the NFL when it comes to uh, players and coaching staff and owner. But, but for you, uh, what was it like for your draft experience, being with your family, waiting for your name to be called, and finally, once your name got called by the Green Bay Packers, what was that feeling like for you? Uh, the feeling was uh, was a surreal feeling. I remember, you know, I was 
I was in Arkansas staying with my uncle during the draft. And, you know, for people who are who are about to get drafted, make sure you're staying, you're 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 at a place where you got good reception. And I was in Arkansas and you know, this was, you know, cell phones was getting and the towers wasn't that strong. So I had bad reception. So I gave the number to my agent and I told him to call you if they're gonna draft me and I would just sit through the whole draft. And round two, they drafted a college teammate of mine, Terrence Murphy. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, I was like, oh, man, they picked him. They should draft me, too. You know, so and when when rounds going down a little further, then Terrence Murphy called me. He said, hey, man, Green Bay just called me again. They said, hey, you know, is this Michael Montgomery? I said, no, this team, Terrence Murphy. They said, well. If you re you better talk to him, or, or else we're gonna if we can't reach him, we're gonna draft somebody else. So he hung up and called me, oh, wow. and I I went a little blistered. I started calling my agent. I called the facility. I called the Green Bay. I said, Hey, look, I'm available. Draft me. I'm here. And then like five minutes went went by, and then bam, my, I saw my name pop up, and then they then I got a flu of calls saying, Hey, we drafted you. So, and uh, my mom started screaming around, and my uncle, and it, it was just a, a surreal experience. Uh, but funny, but the story, make a long story short, you guys, if y'all are getting drafted, <laughs> if y'all are expecting to get drafted, be in a place where you have good cell phone reception. So, but uh, wow. it was it was just a surreal experience. You know, one of the best part times of my life. Yeah, that's a crazy story. So, uh, speaking of that, Ter obviously they called <laughs> Terrence Murphy again. And uh, what was it like being his teammates, uh, being teammates again from college to the NFL? Oh man, it it was amazing, man. It, it you know, we we both came from East Texas. Uh, we 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 was never a stranger to hard work, and to, for me to see him, and we were both on the same team, starting a new you know, career in the professional, uh, in the NFL was just an amazing feat. You know, we would like pick up on each other, you know, energy. And um, he was one hell of a motivator who kept me going. And, you know, unfortunately he got injured, mm -hmm. uh, career season, in, uh, uh, a career ending injury. Um, he was still motivating me, you know, not only to play harder, but, but also be humble in my position. And, um, uh, to, and also just playing for him and playing for other guys who didn't who, who missed that opportunity. So wow. It was just a true blessing. Yeah, so when you guys go into training camp as rookies and when you see players like Nick Barnett, Brett Favre, Donald Driver, what goes through yeah. your mind when you get to play with those type of players? <sighs> you know, when I first got there, uh, I was more motivated than ever. Um, you know, I remember watching – Hard Knocks. After I got drafted, I remember watching the Hard Knocks, and I saw uh, episode Cut Day, mm. and I saw people getting cut. And you know, my whole motivation was never be on that side. So I wanted to put my my I wanted to put myself in the best possible position right. of of never being in that position. And so when I saw guys like those, you know, I was obviously you know excited, a little nervous, but excited to work. But I knew I had a job to do. So, you know, when I saw that, you know, I just knew, you know, just to put my my cleats on and work and 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 try to make things happen, try to make plays. And uh, that was the only thing I was really concerned about. I remember my first day, um, we was going through drills, and it was the very beginning. And I started screaming, hmm. like I ain't going home. I kept screaming, I ain't going home during individual periods. And you know the coaches kind of looking at me, and then some of the deep. And I remember it was an indoor facility, so the my words would echo through the through the uh, the practice facility. And it was like, man, man, you okay? I said, man, I just I I, I, I came here on a mission, and that was something. You know, I was always a self motivator uh, on the field, but uh, just to just to symbolize, you know, me not getting cut and just. Uh, going out there to make things happen so well yeah so uh speaking of the uh, roster what was it like in your first stint with green bay obviously uh packers uh hell of a quarterback hell of an offense amon green was your running back there but if you look at that defense you got like jamal jackson nick barnett 
What was it like playing with that defense in Green Bay for you? Man, that, that defense was so uh, – it was so chock with talent. I mean, I came in, you know, I was riding the bench most of my career because, you know, we had an all-pro defensive end, Kabir Bajamila. Then Aaron Campman, he started to come into his own, and he started to get, you know, put up all-pro careers and multiple, you know, double-digit sacks each year. And then Nick Barnett, who – Man, he was one of the motivate reasons why I played so hard. Mm-hmm. I practiced so hard. Just seeing a guy that's well accomplished like that, but he goes out there and give 110 effort every play, every practice. And uh, and Al Harris, Nick Collins, yeah, you know, across the board, we had guys that was 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 talented. Al Harris, he got into the Packers Hall of Fame. Nick Collins in the Hall of Fame. Um, uh, Nick Barnett, he's surely about to go up, to, go go up in there. Um, Colin, uh, so, you play with Colin Cole, right? Also, yep, Colin Cole, uh, and 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 I just had him on the uh, on my podcast. Yeah. Uh, Colin Cole talked about how, you know, his experience with the Packers. So we had a chock full of talent with, you know, Colin Cole, Cullen Jenkins, Johnny Jolly, yeah, um, Aaron Campman, Kabir Bajamila, Nick Barnett. And we just had a, a great slew of talent. Brett Farr, then Aaron Rodgers, and then uh, Towser at the offensive line, and uh, running back Green to Ryan Grant. You know, it was a chock full of talent. And that receiving core, Donald Driver, yeah. you know, uh, Jones, uh, Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, yeah. uh, Michael, Jam- Michael Finley. Yeah, so, it, you know, we had so much talent. Uh, on the offense and defensive side of the ball, that it, it was a true honor uh, and a blessing to play out there. And the weather was also great too, because it's not during training camp. It's you know maybe like 60, 70 with a cool breeze. The sun is out, so the it, it, the weather was awesome out there. Yeah. So um, obviously uh, you got to play with Bear Favre, Aaron Rodgers too. Those two quarterbacks. I'm gonna ask you that later on, but. You had a stint with the Vikings staying in the same division. What was that transition like for you leaving the Packers the first time, going to the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings? What, what was the, your experience like with the Vikings? What was it like for you? And then staying in the same uh, division. Um, you know, uh, it, was, it was a good experience. I, I had an opportunity to, to be coached under Coach Dunbar. He's a D-line coach. He's actually now with the Steelers now. Yeah. And I learned so much being in that, in that room, being coached by him and also playing with, you know, Jared Allen was there, Kevin Williams was the William brothers then Ray Edwards and then Brian Robertson and seeing how those guys play and how they saw the game and productive. And uh, it was a great, I learned a lot as how to, how to be a defensive lineman more than anything. Cause you know, I was always the guy who played hard, but when I, you know, but the teaching and the coaching of, of a former defensive lineman kind of broke down, you know, what to look for, how to play, how to get off blocks, how to pass rush, how to get off the ball. You know, I learned so much being in that place, hmm. uh, playing there. So it was uh, it was never another love loss for me, you know, just, just an opportunity. And I think out of my career in the professional league, I think I learned the most as, how to play a defensive line. I remember Jared Allen, he told me, you know, look, you don't get sacks, you know, with your hands, you get sacks with your feet. All right. So even if you're, you're pass rushing, you know, if you miss all, on a move, just keep your feet moving to the quarterback and run your feet. Cause you, you might work a move and your feet is not run. You still be in the same place. So he told me just always just keep my feet moving towards the quarterback. And that, and that was just, just little tips and nuggets of of of, of what and and uh, what he uh, displayed that was really inspirational to me. Speaking of Jared Allen, uh, what was it like playing alongside him? Uh, this guy is a future Hall of Famer in my opinion, and oh hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully soon. But uh, for you, what was it like playing alongside him? And obviously, the Minnesota Vikings are known for their for their defense, amazing defense they had. But a lot, just playing alongside him and this, uh, what was that like for you? Man, it was it was amazing to see you know, cause you know, you know, high productive all pro D lineman, you know, from Jared Allen, the William brothers, the, yeah. the Ray Edwards, you know, coming in. It was a high 
it was it was really good surreal to see how they played and what and how they thought because it's it's an it's it's one thing just watching them play but listen to their thought process you know how they play the game and what what reads they were seeing it was just a a great evolution for me as a defensive lineman and to see how they played that really just stood apart on what NFL defensive linemen, defensive ends, what they want to see, you know, they want to see you fit in the run game, but they want to see you mostly get after that quarterback, you know, uh, and that was the thing that kind of like stood out for me just to be a guy who just, who could rush the pass. So when you played against your former team, the Packers, was it weird being on a different uniform and uh, not, mm-hmm. be, and, and then when you went, when you went to visit Green Bay, how weird was it for you? Well, uh, I didn't. Um, I'm, I played with Minnesota, and I made it through the final set towards the end. Okay. And then I got released, so I really didn't have a chance to play against them in Minnesota, because I went through training. I okay. went through off season, training camp, and I made it to the final cuts, and mm-hmm. then I got released. So I didn't really have a chance to make it okay. uh, through uh, the season and play against them. But uh, I, made, I made that through the all-season training camp, so I really didn't have a chance to play against them. So uh, obviously you got another chance to come back to Green Bay for a second stint, and obviously transitioning to Aaron Rodgers, uh, a great quarterback, still playing yeah. the league, a great quarterback, and uh, taking over for, for Brett Favre. And when you come back to Green Bay, you still have some f- familiar faces you played with, uh, like Dick, Nick Barnett was still there, uh, Donald Driver. Uh, and then you have now you bring in Jermichael Jermar, Finley, Ryan Gray, you got Jordy Nelson. Uh, you got a lot more weapons and defense. You got AJ Hawk, which is a great linebacker. Jared Bush, a great defensive back who played. Brian Beluga, a great offensive lineman. So when you go back to your second stint, how excited were you just to come back? Uh, man, it was it was exciting um, just to see my career just come to a full circle. Uh, and not only that, just playing alongside guys I play with, because um, you know I, I got released, you know, the 29, 2010, and then I came back that towards the towards the middle of the end of the season, and just to see that it was uh, just a, a surreal uh, situation to see familiar faces and and uh, to be with that team as they made that Super Bowl championship push was uh, just amazing experience. Hmm. So uh, I want to ask you about the Green Bay Packer fans. Uh, Lambeau Field, a, 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 cra- a great stadium to play in. Obviously, the atmosphere is wild. And whenever someone scores a touchdown, they they jump up jump up to the fans. And uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So what was that like? Seeing, uh, what was it like playing in front of those fans? It's a crazy atmosphere. Man, it, it, was, it was amazing. I um, Man, those fans, man, they really make that team. You know, it's funny, like a lot of times people, you see stadiums and it's like people are ducked off, but the Packers stadium is right downtown. <laughs> so you'll just leave the mall and you'll go like two or three blocks and you'll see the big stadium in the middle. So it's 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 a, it's a town atmosphere and um, the fans are so loving, uh, so courageous. And, uh, you know, it could be like – you know, negative 10 degrees and they'll be out there with no shirt on wow. screaming their butts off. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and I mean, uh, the Packers fans, man, they, they really, uh, they really make the team and, you know, it's a, a, um, fans, uh, run organization and that's how, how it treats. So. Hmm. So, um, uh, so now I want to ask you about the division, what was it like competing against the Bears, Vikings, and uh, those, especially those two teams? What was it? What was it like competing those, against those two teams? Man, it was it was always physical. You know, you already know, like when you're playing against the Vikings, you're playing against the Bears. You already knew what type of game you're going to be playing. It's going to be a physical game up front. They're going to be running the ball, and you just need to you know tighten your chin strap because it's you're going to be playing all day. On aggressive run style, uh, run style offense. So those games were always exciting. It was always cold, <laughs> so we always played them in December. So it was always um, uh, a physical game up front. Yeah, so but um, really exciting. So, 
Yeah, so obviously after your NFL career, you transitioned to a different league. So explain to our fans uh, what league did you play in and what was that experience like? Uh, I, play, I think it was called the UFL uh, for, for for a year. And there was like a semi, it was like a, a, a pro league that they was trying to uh, create. I think it lasted two years. And, um, and uh, it was a really cool experience, man. We, it was a lot of guys I, you know, I used to play against or play with that was on that team. And, you know, I, I had a really good season. You know, I finished second in sacks in the whole conference. And, um, you know, and we lost in the championship, um, in the championship game. But uh, it, it was a really good league. And, you know, with, with startups like that, it's just difficult because, you know, you know, we don't have the capital to invest and, and, and nothing can replace the NFL. And, but it was overall a good experience. And, um, you know, I wish it would have got off to a better start. Yeah, so actually I want to ask you, obviously uh, there's a tradition. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan. And uh, they, <laughs> oh man, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> so they always play on Thanksgiving, and you guys play on Thanksgiving too against Detroit. So what was yeah. that, what was a Thanksgiving matchups like for you uh, playing against Detroit every Thanksgiving? And what, what, uh, does that guy does that motivate you as a player? And uh, especially playing on Thanksgiving and where every when everyone comes to, together as a family to host a feast. And what was that like for you guys playing on Thanksgiving? Um, playing on Thanksgiving, it was always fun. Um, you know, play, again, Detroit. You know, Detroit, man, I had some of most of my physical games was against Detroit. Detroit, Chicago, and Minnesota. Those was, like, always the most physical games ever. And uh, and in that arena, we I remember playing in Detroit. We played in that arena, and I remember just being tired. Cause man, how the game was being played, and uh, it was also a great experience. You know, all the time I would have my family come visit me, my mom and my aunts. You know, they would cook some food. So by the time the game is over, I'll be back and they have uh, dinner for me. So it it was always a great time for me. I always had a good time uh, playing against Detroit and uh, just coming home and getting some good home cooked food. So it and also motivation. You know, I always tried to take every game the same. So every game was always motivation for me because, you know, it's every game you're playing against the top talent, top talent, every game, every week. And uh, I was already motivated. So I always just took every game the same way. I, uh, I know this is too late, but I, I got to ask you, was that a catch? <laughs> oh, oh, come on. The, uh, the Green Bay catch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cat. The Green Bay cat. <laughs> I gotta ride with my team to uh, the thick and thin. They gave me, they gave me, they gave me a shot, man. A lot of people didn't, and uh, you know they pulled it off again yesterday. So yeah, yeah. So they're Crosby still doing it, man. He was there when I was there. Crosby, Aaron, they're both they're both still playing at a high level. I have both of them on my fantasy team, Crosby and Rogers. So, <laughs> oh man, oh good, oh man, boy, you, I, I'm sure you was like, yeah. after that first week, you was like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you was a little sweating a little bit, but yeah. he's he's coming back around, and and, and him and Devonte Adams are kind of like making a really, really good connection. Um, yeah, but, but uh, yes. yeah. So now looking back at your career and how great for you to be in this position to be able to, to be able to play the game that you love and uh, making your parents proud and working hard every day, having your mom helping you out to, uh, from day one. And how great for you to be in this position? Man, uh, it's, it's just truly a blessing, man. I, you know, I always said I wanted to go pro in football and basketball and, you know, you know, I spoke it to existence. You know, I was in school, high school. I was, you know, I know some of my classmates thought I was crazy when I would tell them that. But I told them I'm going to be a professional athlete. I'm mm -hmm. going to go play football. I'll be in the NBA or in the NFL. And, you know, for me to talk about it, but actually the work I put into it, um, it's, it's, it's a surreal situation. And, 
you know, I always, I always I talked to Colin Cole yesterday and talked about, you know, when he was coming up and people were doubting him. Yeah. And we had a discussion about, you know, people doubting him. And I told him, you know, I kind of fell in love with those moments because mm-hmm. those moments made me push so much harder to achieve my goal. You know, I always say I was too weak. I was too slow. And that would made me motivate myself way harder than the amount of praise I got to to prove them wrong. So, you know, I also think the good times and the bad times, because those bad times helped me propel to the person I am today and helped me achieve my ultimate goal as being an NFL player. And um, it was just a humbling experience. And also just, it was grateful to put my family in a better position financially. Um, was uh, was a, was um, an amazing uh, feat for me. Yeah, so I'm just curious for you to out uh, to to uh, block out the outsiders and and the haters. How, what was your routine for you? What was your process like trying to avoid that and focus on football? And obviously, you you, you did that. You, you you in my opinion, you you were a great player. You play, you had a great career also. So for you, how did you uh, block that? And uh, what was your routine for for that as a player? Uh, just routine, just, just, you know, when I would feel down, I would just try to go through it and just get back to my, my routine. Uh, I know, I know it's, you know, when, uh, things happen, you know, I, I know it's a lot different now with social media and yeah. everybody has a voice, you know, back then, you know, they, you know, you had to worry about maybe newspapers and maybe a couple of things on Facebook, but, you know, with everything, with so many platforms, you got so much to deal with. and you know, just getting back to your routine, doing things you, you like doing and, and keeping things balanced, uh, I think was uh, a thing that kind of just helped me outweigh the good and bad of uh, being a professional athlete and being in the pressure of, you know, making a team, performing, you know, taking care of your family, uh, just having balance and doing things you, you enjoy doing, you know, in, the, in these days, and you know, you just got to you got to take your happiness. You got to find it and you got to keep it close to you. So hmm. just being balanced and, and uh, getting back to things I love. Hmm. So I want to get to your podcast now called Undefeated and everyone go check that out on all social media formats. He does a great job with that. And how did your podcast come about and how often do you guys record your shows? Uh, right now I'm doing it just uh, doing it weekly, uh, hmm. once a week. Um, you know, uh, I came up with the concept of, uh, you know, overcoming adversity, building wealth, building healthy relationships. And, um, you know, I, as I get older, I start thinking about legacy and th- start thinking about what I can give back, what I can put on this earth. Cause you know, we're all, you know, guaranteed so, so much, so much time, so little time. And, you know, through my career and my post career, I had an opportunity to meet a lot of, of amazing people um, you know, from Aaron Rodgers to Brett Favre to, you know, Lou Gossip Jr. to Oprah Winfrey to, you know, uh, just uh, all sorts of people through all, throughout my life and my career. Uh, and I always want to just maybe get them on and, and talk about their life and hopefully encourage people to keep pursuing their goals. Let them know that, Hey, regardless of where these people are in, in the high status, you know, they had to overcome something. So don't think that, you know, they're better than you. They're just how they handle the situation is what, how they got to, them, got to their situation. So just, just putting it out there and hopefully it can motivate people to build and, um, you know, overall mental well-being is uh, is something I'm just trying to push towards to help people. Hmm. So this is a two-part question. So for you, what's a what's it like sharing your story on these platforms like this, my Irish show, and having your own show now, so people can share their stories on your show and re- you can relate to them too with your story. So what's that been like for you, being a former player now and having other former players on your show or current players, whatever? Yeah to be able to, to share each other's stories on uh, on the platform you have? It's, it's been fun. It's been ther- therapy for me, uh, you know, and, and great to share and catch up with old friends. It's, it's been therapy for me. You know, a lot of times, you know, I'm a type of person. I like to handle 
in you know handle things in house. But when they I hear this story, and they motivate me for my story, you know, so it's it's therapeutic for me and uh, realizing that everybody has a story and everybody has something that people can learn from. So everybody I bring on, I'm always learning from them. Like I always said, I said this earlier this week, I said, man, I always like fall in love with the with uh, the guests I have on each week. Cause you know, you, you, you spend so much time, you know, you know, learning about the, your guests and, you know, learning about their life story, their journey, re, you know, watching previous interviews. So you kind of, kind of fall in love with them all, all and understand why you like them so much on more stuff they've been through. So it's it's just been a therapy for me and also just enjoying to get to know other people. Yeah, that, that's awesome, yeah. So uh, what advice would you give to young players um, or young kids that are trying to reach their goals? Uh, just work hard, keep your priorities uh, up front. Always go into a situation when, because a lot of times, you know, we see, you know, just know, you know, people are praised in public for the hard work they put in private. So you want to get to the next level. You got to put a, a lot of hard work into it. Keep your priorities right. You know, obey your parents. You know, remember, if you want to have go to a big school, you got to have big school grades. Yeah. And uh, you got to always put your academics up front. And, and if you want to go to those big schools, you got to have big grades. And and work hard um and not only that just trust just try to understand balance and not and if i if i went and back and talked to my younger self i would have told my younger self the not to worry so much you know you know stress so much you know as long as you perform well and and you you put all you all in you know everything else is going to work itself out you know, only control what you can control. Um, the things I could control was my effort, uh, my my effort, my performance. And that's the only thing. You can't control if a coach is like this person, the coaches don't like this person, you know, you're not getting played. But you, the only thing you can control is your effort and putting your best foot forward. And um, that would I tell, you know, all people, you know, you know, there's all different phases you gotta stay on tune with, and uh, and also have a good group of a support system with you. You know, as you gr growing up, you know, social media it's always having a good group of support system around you. Say, for instance, LeBron. LeBron had his you know three or four clicks of people, and you'd never heard anybody stealing money, right. you know, any bad stuff. You know, everybody was still on the up and up when he was coming up. So just find good hearted people that support you and are trying to do the same things you're doing. Yeah. So one of our co-hosts, um, her name is Kia Lyon. She always loves to ask these questions to, to guess to the guests we have on. And I'm going to ask her, ask you this for, for her. Um, yeah. What is your key to balance? My key to balance is family, uh, family. Cause um, you can't replace family. You can't replace your, you know, your close best friends, you know, somebody you could talk to. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, even as men, we're, we're, we're taught to hold things in, not to share, be strong. And a lot of times that's not good, you know. So I think it's always best to, to, to have an open dialogue with your family, your friends about what's going on with you and what's going on with them and, and enjoy life because, yeah. you know. You know, we're we're only given to given this this time on Earth, and always be grateful where you at. Um, I think that's always because you know, even when I was playing in the NFL, you know, every before every game, you know, I, there was a song, a, a gospel song I would listen to called "I Won't Complain" by Paul Jones, mm -hmm. and it was just a song that did get got me humbled made me think about everything you know he taught he said i thank god through the good and the bad hmm. and um that just thing just kind of stood out to me just to stay humble and balanced regardless of what goes on and what because everything could always be better you always wish things could be better but knowing that you know you 
in a great position and things could be a lot worse than where you at that uh, keeps you humbled and balanced and uh, just moving forward. So. Yeah, so we do a quick little fun, fun little segment here on the show. It's called the rapid fire segment. You ready for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Uh, fa- uh, memorable game in college and memorable game in the NFL. All right. Memorable game in college was when we played Colorado. I had a really good, a really good day at the office. I had 12 tackles. Hmm. I had two sacks. And after the game, my mother, <laughs> my mother, I guess she, she didn't think I, my performance was that good. So she told me, Look, son, you need to play harder. You think you're going to make it to the NFL playing like that? I saw you wasn't giving your all on every play. And, and it was in a big family room, and everybody was like, <gasps> so that was a great game. And against Tennessee was, uh, I guess, a good personal record for me. I produced the same numbers, 12 tackles, a sack. Wow. Uh, got the game ball, whatever, game ball, and uh, – it was just a great game for me to come off the bench and and uh, and put up those numbers. Um, uh, favorite food. Favorite food. Mm, that's a good one. I have so many of them. Uh, you know, I I guess I always I eat it every day if I can. Uh, a grilled a spinach a grilled chicken Caesar wrap mm. with gr- with spinach tortilla with bacon. Wow. I I love me wraps. I always make them at home. That's like one of my favorite go-to meals when I'm at home. Hmm. Uh, funniest teammate. Funniest teammate. Uh, ooh, it's a, it's a toss-up between Johnny Jolly and Cullen Jenkins and Corey Williams. Those were like the funniest guys I've ever been on a team with. The one, uh, I remember one story. Al Harris came in. It was before a game. And he had this big old mink chinchilla, and it hang like down to the rope, and it looked like a little Chewbacca. So mm-hmm. when he came in the locker room, Corey Williams and Jenkins, they started screaming out, <laughs> and everybody started laughing in the locker room. And, and uh, I think it was a toss up out of those three. Wow. Uh, favorite music? Favorite music? Uh, I'm really big into like like symphony now. An orchestra like uh, Hans Zimmer. I don't know if you're familiar. He does all the music scores for the Superman movies, movies. And um, I'm I'm really big into that. So when I'm working out, you know, I'm not listening to rap or hip hop anymore. I'm more listening to like YouTube superhero tributes with symphony and 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 uh, music scores. So I'm really big into that now. Mm. So obviously, uh, <clears throat> I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan and. Uh, we're playing. Ooh. You were playing the Eagles tonight. Uh, Monday Night Football, playing the Eagles. And what do you? Uh, but before we get to that, what are your overall thoughts before on this NFL season? Obviously, Packers are uh, big, big season for them because uh, you, you don't know the future of Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. So, but uh, what are your overall thoughts on this year's season so far? Uh, man, it's been exciting. It's been really exciting. I was watching some of the highlights in the other day and yesterday, and it's been. A lot of great games. It's good to see the the people they're drafting are contributing early and performing well. Uh, like even you know Jacksonville is losing, the quarterback is still holding his own. He's not stinking it up the place. So um, it's good to see you know bad the, the teams that are oftentimes losing being competitive, and um, and and the quarterbacks are playing well except the, the Jets. I don't know. They have a terrible time of picking talent. They they really had a trouble. I don't know who they're they're drafting, the who who's in charge of drafting players, but they always they seem to. That's how the good teams get better. They yeah. draft well, and they develop their talent. You know, I never thought they should have got Zach Wilson. They should have got that dude from uh, from the San Francisco. Oh, Trey Lance. Yeah, they should have got him, or they should have got Justin Fields. I wouldn't have never got, I would never have got him. But it's good to see, you know, the league is competitive. Yeah. You know, I don't like the the new calls. How things are just so easy for the quarterbacks. Like you can't touch him, you can't do anything. Receive like it's dumbed down for offense. But it's good to see competitive uh, football is back. 
Yeah, so I don't know if you saw this yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you're the type of person that bets, but uh, you, I'm sure you saw the bet with Jermichael Finley and Jeff Garcia yesterday with the 49ers Packers. And Jeff, uh, obviously, when the 49ers lost, Jeff Garcia had to wear a Packers hat. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, but, no, I didn't see that. I have to catch that. Yeah, so Jermichael, uh, it, it's on Instagram. So are you the type yeah. of person that does would, would do that type of situation or if it, it was that kind of bet? Yeah, yeah, I do that. I, there was somebody I, I bet. Uh, I forgot her name. Uh, uh, Jay, uh, Ja, Jafina. She, we bet if uh, the Packers beat the Saints, she have to wear a Packers jersey. So you know, I'm always doing stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm a big Cowboy fan. And do you think we win mm. tonight against the Eagles? And what are your thoughts on Demarcus Lawrence? Uh, man, it's uh, it's it sucks to see that. Is he is he back? Or oh, is he yeah, still he's gone? Still here. Okay, it sucks to see that, man, because he was just starting to get his, you know, stride because he got hurt, and then he came back and got hurt again. You know, I really loved watching him play. Um, but I tell you who what, man. If he – when he starts to understand how to play that position, uh, Michael Parsons, he's going to be a double-sack, a double double-sack, uh, double-digit uh, double sack guy season after season because he already has the speed and the effort to he, he looked like a Von Miller like that <laughs> he had that I started seeing flashes of Von Miller how he popped on the screen and how fast he is but um, uh, it's, it's tough to see that the Cowboys you know the Cowboys they should win this game because Dak Prescott is playing and at, at he he's gotten better I don't know. I understand people like, you know, even people like to talk about him because, you know, they're the trendy topic all the time and they like to diminish him. But Dak Prescott, as a quarterback, his numbers has gotten better over the yeah. years. You know, he's not – he's no more dinking Dak no more. He's definitely throwing the ball down and he's gotten comfortable. Uh, with his position and he's also been lighting it up so I'm excited for him I'm glad to see he got paid mm -hmm. I'm glad to see he's performing a lot better um, he got multiple weapons across the board with Cooper with Lamb um, so you know it sucks that you know a lot of their offensive linemen are getting hurt so yeah. it's it's is I, I expect it's going to be a close game uh, but the Cowboys should win. Are they playing in Cowboys? Or, or they, yeah, um, uh, today's our first home game in Dallas. So okay, so they should win this game because they can, you know, get motivation from the crowd, and you know they're used to playing on their turf because you know their offense is way better than Philadelphia's offense. Yeah. But Philly, they got a really good <laughs> running game. Yeah. Their offensive line is physical, and they yeah. will maul you. So it's funny, you know, with those three, four defenses, you know, there's so many holes in that defense. Like you got to really have some guys up front who can right. who can manage the line of scrimmage and have the linebackers to free flow. So it's um, it's going to be exciting to see, and I can't wait to watch it. So are you planning on going to any Packers games this year? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go to – they invited me to come to a game uh, next month and – well, not next – that's uh, November. So, I'm going to be, uh, you know, one of the, the honorary captains on November. So, it's going to be really, really exciting to see. So, before we get to the last few things, does uh, Aaron Jones remind you of your former teammate, Amon Green, a little bit? Mm, I think Aaron Jones had a little more flexibility. As far as running and catching, but Amon Green, he was more of a power guy. Aaron Moore, Aaron Jones was more like he could do both. Well, they utilize them differently. You know, he's more catching at the back. Aaron Green, that guy, I mean, I could tell you an incident. Man, he runs the ball so hard. There was one time we was in training camp and was in practice. And I was coming off a block, and I tried to do an arm tackle. And he ran over my arm. Man, it hurt. It was so sore. That guy is so strong and so big. Wow. And um, hmm. I think, I think uh, I don't know, the game is different. 
because, you know, they're throwing the ball a lot more and they're using running backs. They're not giving the running backs 30 t- touches a game. So, you know, Aaron Jones is not dependent on that, but he's also a great talent, talented back. Uh, but they, it's just two different types of uh, settings, how they use each other. Hmm. But uh, they're both still good players. Um, I still go with <laughs> Green because he, he's a guy who could carry the whole get the, the game if he could uh, with his size. And, uh, but uh, they're both still good backs. Hmm. So the last two things here, um, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Uh, he's a former NFL coach. He's now the offensive coordinator at Tennessee State with Eddie George. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to help him prevent human trafficking making sure the community stays safe. So we'll, I'll, we'll send you the foundation so you can go check it out. Okay, perfect. I would love that. Yeah. And the last thing here, uh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the center workers right now? Uh, just uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I understand, you know, we're in a pandemic and, and uh, you know, being safe and being safe for others is an all-time high. You know, I don't I don't play around with it. You know, I got vaccinated, just doing my part, you know, and, you know, I know that's this big stigma of vaccinations and population control, and they're going to slowly kill people. Look, you know, things are not like that. You know, the, the skiggy pyramids, you know, the it's not like that, you know, more, you know, we're all a lot better than where we were back then. So uh, this is a real this is real. People are dying from it, regardless of what the numbers say and what, you know, the conspiracy theories. People are passing away from this, and this is serious. And I think we should all just get on board and just try to get work together so we can try to, you know, get rid of this and try to get to a little semi subnormal hmm. uh, of living. Um, so, you know, from the people that's out there doing their jobs and uh, in the medical field, you know, thank you for all your service, you know. Hopefully they don't go unnoticed, but uh, everything you've done and everything you're doing, I know it's your job and you're doing it because your job, but, you know, through going the extra mile is um, greatly appreciated for me and uh, for my team. Yeah, well said. And there it is. That wraps up episode 910 with former NFL def- defense- defensive end Michael Montgomery. Go follow him on all social media formats. He has a podcast out there called The Undefeated. Go check that out. That's really awesome. And Michael, man, I just want to say thank you for joining the show. It's truly an honor. Uh, We would like to have you back on the show again so you can meet the full team down the line. But keep up the great work and uh, and, uh, stay safe. You and your family stay safe. Man, thank you so much. I definitely appreciate that. Everybody, you can follow me on IM96GB, Instagram, Twitter, all that. And, uh, yeah, just come take a look at me, man. I'm I'm putting out some really good stuff, and there's more stuff to come. Yeah, thank you again, and uh, this was awesome. All right. Thank you so much.